Hi, I'm Toby, and today I want to share a project that helps me do my other project recently. Recently, I was working with TSSOP and ESOP packages, and I realized an issue when I am trying to work with them without a reflow hotplate. So I searched online to see if I could get a reflow hotplate for cheap. After some digging, I eventually land on two final best solution. One is the MHP30 hotplate. Um, you can see it on sale on Adafruit for around 100 US dollar, which is a PD powered mini hotplate that you can plug your PD charger into it, and then it will do his hotplate stuff. The other one is No Bell Life 24 US dollar hotplate, which make use of an aluminium PCB hotplate design. So um, instead of a proper heating element, it also uses PCB as hotplate, but it is using an aluminium based PCB, so it will be slightly more durable than the standard FR4 hotplate. The issue is that both hotplate doesn't offer auto reflowing process like an infrared often usually does. What I want is more like when I put the PCB on top of the hotplate, it will automatically reflow and then after it is done, I just get the PCB out and I can work on it. That is why I decided to make my own reflow hotplate, which is this. This is my DIY PD reflow hotplate. You see, building a hot plate like this is nothing difficult. You just need a heater, um, a temperature sensor, and something to control the power to the heater, right? And in this board right here, I'm using C552G, which has already been utilized in my other project before, with a few MOSFET and power delivery circuitries to make it be able to power via USB PD protocol supported chargers. And in the middle here, you will find a 7805 power regulator, which is a regulator that drops the 20 volt input to 5 volt for the MCU. When I'm designing this project, I find three most complicated issues that I need to solve. The first one is finding a suitable temperature sensor for this project that can withstand up to 300 degrees Celsius. The second one is to trigger a 20 volt output from a USB PD power supply in order to supply power to my device. The last one which is the most important one is to find a heater. This is more durable than a PCB hotplate and it's much more safer to work with compared to AC powered hotplate. Let's start with the temperature sensor. The sensor I'm using is the NT4 thermostat. You will usually find these in the 3D printer heated block. However, those sensor package for 3D printer contain other elements or other wrapping materials that doesn't really support up to 250 to 300 degrees Celsius range. Instead, I buy the glass bulb that inside the sensor, which is actually the thermostat, and use that instead. And the next thing I want to talk about is the PD triggering. If you have worked with GAN chargers before, you might know that USB PD supply different voltage from 5 volt up to 20 volt, and as heating element in general, use a lot of power. So I'm using the 20 volt as the input power for my hot plate. The issue is how can I trigger 20 volt out of a standard PD charger? The simple answer is, of course, using a trigger chip. And the trigger chip I use is IP2721, which is a trigger chip that supports up to 20 volt output. If you want to make sure that your charger output 20 volts, make sure you get one that is at least 60 volts. Generally speaking, 65 volt chargers should be more than enough to power this hot plate if you really want to get yourself a dedicated charger for this hot plate. Lastly, let's talk about the MCH hot plate. For those who has used PCB hotplate before or has heard about the issue of durability regarding PCB hotplate, PCB hotplate generally don't last long because the material made of the PCB, which is called FR4 by the way, um, can handle up to 110 degrees Celsius or 130 degrees Celsius for high temperature one for one or two times, but it's not designed to handle thermal cycle like this for a long duration. After some research, I end up with a heater called the MCH, which is metal ceramic heater. 
which is usually used in laboratory or medical device that require precise heating. The benefit of this is that it is DC powered, it is really easy to use, it has quite long durability. However, the disadvantages of it is it's really hard to come by, really hard to get, and you pretty much need to custom made them just for your device. And not to mention it also costs a little bit more than the standard PCB solution. Next thing is to move on to design a PCB to integrate everything together. And this is also the perfect timing to mention about the sponsor of this video, JLC PCB. They provide high quality PCB and PCBA services suitable for prototyping or production projects. Um, they also provide 3D printing services, so if you want to make a prototype with good casing, you can also use the PCB service and 3D printing service from JLC to help you complete your prototype for demo or for exhibitions. Check out the link in the description below for more information. When I designed my PCB, um, I left a hole in the right hand side of the PCB just to make sure the heat from the MCH hot plate doesn't absorb by the FR4 PCB below and prevent it from expanding and cracking. After the PCB prototype has completed and shipped to my location, now I need to start designing the structure to hold the heater in place. For the heating element structure itself, it is held together by four M3 stands off. This part, like a wood structure, is actually MDF. And the MDF is wrapped by a layer of Kapton tape to make sure the temperature, um, even if it reach over the temperature where it will start smoking, it won't actually start to smoke because of the Kapton tape right here is blocking oxygen contact with the MDF board. So generally speaking, when the temperature on the top layer is around 230 to 240 degrees, the silicon layer below is around 200 degrees, and the MDF is actually less than 180 degrees, so it's kind of in the safe range where um, the all the materials layered and sandwiched on between doesn't actually exceed the maximum temperature it can handle. So when the temperature actually reaches the FL4 layer, which is the PCB layer here, it's actually safe to touch. I guess it's be around less than 60 degrees Celsius, which makes it not to deform too much and affect the stability of the whole PCB performance and the circuitry on top of it. I also want to mention a little bit about the software here. So the software is written in Arduino and it can be programmed by yourself if you build one of these things yourself and you will see that there is four programming pins over here. This is the USB pin, standard USB 2.0 pins where you can just attach a male USB header to it and then insert it to your computer so that it acts as a programmable device in your Arduino IDE. All the code in this project are open source on my GitHub page, so you can check them out and modify it according to your needs. As usual, when I'm designing this project, I have lots of leftover components due to you know MOQ or shipping limitations. So um, I will build a few prototypes and put them on Tindy uh, for sale. If you are interested to get a few prototypes for testing out before you mass manufacture yours, or just too busy to build yourself a reflow hot plate but you really want one, feel free to support this project by um, purchasing a prototype on my Tindy store, um, which I will leave the link in the video description below. Finally, um, if you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe to this channel and I will see you next time. Bye!